actually have like the Sunder Drives meetings outside if the weather is nice there, uh, which is really nice. And uh, of course, it's a place for smokers to go. There's also a smoking room, which is technically the, the mud room on the back of the house. Uh, and then there's uh, there's the boardroom, which has a large you know 1080p display where we can do the teleconferencing thing. And meetings can happen there. There's sort of the middle dining area where snacks are available for you know donation and sodas in the fridge and that kind of thing. Uh, so if there's a board meeting kind of thing happening in the boardroom, people can still hang out in that room. Uh, there's a kitchen where people can make food for for others and host dinners and things like that. Um, we had uh, uh, let's see also upstairs there's the crash space for people that need an overnight and uh, there's also what's called the media room which has multiple computers and a space for people to just you know focus on work uh, and kind of have whatever alone time they need to uh, to get up there and just get something done so very specific purposes for the different areas there's a basement as well which has some storage but there's really no reason to be down there and also hosts the King police scanner as well I think he's a plant. And, <laughs> and do you still have the laser pistol target range? Yes, and yes. For anybody who didn't hear, yes, we've got a, there's a space, there's room at the new space for us to do massive outdoor concerts. By massive, I mean about a thousand people. Um, and yes, there will still be the laser indoor pistol target range. And darts. <laughs> Is there any other questions from the audience? No, just regular. Go ahead. Oh, for me? Yeah. For him. Yeah. Okay. Um, does the uh, activist center still have a, like a guest diet? Or something? You used to have a night where it was okay for people to come in. Oh, um, there's similar to what Ofer was describing earlier. There, uh, if somebody wants to host sort of an open event where people who are not, you know, members or necessarily guests. They can certainly, they can do that. That doesn't happen that often, um, but guests are always welcome. Uh, you know, anybody who's a member can bring guests into the Keen Activist Center. And, you know, even if I don't really know somebody, I'll still bring them in as a guest. I, I like to err on the side of being welcoming uh, rather than on the side of being exclusive. So if somebody comes to town and nobody knows who the person is, you know, please come to the Keen Activist Center, which is a nice thing because then you don't actually have to let anyone into your home, right? So if there's some new person that shows up and they're a little weird and you're not really sure about them, you know, they can still come hang out at the Keen Activist Center because, you know, there's some books on the shelf. What are they going to do? Take, take some Liberty books? Okay, fine. Well, what's the worst that could really happen? Uh, in that case, you know, if you get paranoid, uh, you, you, then your club's dead as far as I'm concerned. I think that you need to err on the side of being welcoming. Let somebody display their personality. If they're a problem, then you can, you know, you can take measures to uh, to shut them out. Did you want to pass this on to everybody else to kind of ask them? Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Uh, well, in our new iteration, we're open to the public, so anybody can come as long as we're open. Anyone who's been here a week and has made any effort to meet anyone can find a way to get into my place. Uh, otherwise, just show up on the first Tuesday of every month and that's a guarantee. Um, uh, with what you said regarding paranoia, yeah, that's worth uh, reiterating. Always assume the fence in the room. Uh, I haven't had time to install my Faraday cage yet and most people keep their phones on. So just learn to live with it. Uh, we did have Faraday cages, actually, at the old place. And if you want them, we can show you how to make them. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> yes, policies. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We try, we try to be welcoming. I I, I am a little paranoid. Um, uh, so I I I have to come combat that myself. And uh, I think people, you know, we're 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 still in that stage where we can be a little mysterious, which the quill was, you know, for the first couple of years. And um, and we're we're trying to feeling out what our, what our our risks are and. As far as we can tell, we don't do really do anything that anyone should really care about. We're just kind of a private club, so I think we're loosening up a little bit, and we do want people to, to feel welcome. You know, if you're if you're uh, you know if you believe in liberty, uh, it's a, it's a place for you. So if you come to Portsmouth, we'll make every effort to. I think one of the big things is that uh, we we do have a smaller population, so there's not necessarily people there continuously. So it's a little harder to just drop by if you're new in town, but if you if you post on the Free Coasters board and say, hey, I, you know, I'd like to come check out the Praxium, uh, someone will 
you know, make time to, to show you around. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so uh, one last question, if, if there's, oh, OK, go ahead. Um, what's been the biggest unexpected surprise for you since opening these hours? Unexpected surprises. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I can't really use the raid thing because you know we kind of expected something like that would happen at some point. Given that the Keen Activist Center has sort of always been on the radar, it never really started in any kind of a secretive uh, manner. I mean, the government guys in Keen certainly know where I live. And uh, wow, the biggest surprise aside from being raided at eight in the morning. The FBI wanting in. Yeah, that would be a good one. So Rich Paul, um, as you know, maybe you know, don't know, he went to jail for selling cannabis. And when he was arrested, the FBI was involved in that arrest. And really the reason they arrested Rich Paul was because they wanted to turn him against the good people of the Keen Activist Center. They wanted him to wear a wire uh, into the Keen Activist Center for the purpose of getting people to sell him drugs or something like that, uh, which, you know, it's, <laughs> he was not willing to do, obviously, and so uh, they, it was interesting because the FBI was willing to actually turn loose a heroin dealer. Okay, so they actually had busted a guy who was slinging heroin on the streets of Keene. They used him to bust Rich Paul so they could then try to turn Rich Paul against the other activists in the Free State Project. And yeah, I would say that was a, a surprise. But I like Kirk's policy of presume the Fed is in the room. Presume that you know there's somebody who's already planted a listening device and just you know be on the up and up about the things that are going on. And if you're going to take a risk, at least know that you are taking a risk. You know, if somebody's uh, if somebody's going to smoke some cannabis, you know, there's a possibility that some informant is observing them do that. And obviously, you should you should uh, realize that there are risks involved in those activities. Um. Biggest surprise. I'm going to go with the biggest good surprise. Um, I think that the biggest good surprise was finding out just how many, just how many people out there who have never really thought in terms of liberty from a political sense or a philosophical sense. They just have one thing that kind of falls outside normal society. And once you identify what that thing is and start talking to them about how they ought to be able to do pretty much whatever that thing is, as long as it's not hurting anybody else, how much they start to listen and get tuned in to the other broader ideas of liberty. Like it's not okay for the government to tell you what you can do in your bedroom as long as it's consenting adults. Well, yeah. Okay, so why should they be able to tell you what you do in your kitchen? Well, I guess they should. Oh, well then they probably shouldn't tell you what you can do in your garage either, right? And you just start working through the rest of their life and pretty soon you've got people who are extremely committed to liberty even though they really don't think of it that way. <clears throat> My biggest surprise is, is pretty simple. Uh, I cannot believe how many people have donated how much time and money uh, just to help us out at various times over the last five years. Just voluntarily, spontaneously, often. It's pretty amazing. It's like too long to even recount all. Yeah, lots. I thought moving the kegerator downstairs was fun. Oh my god. <laughs> so, just just the kegerator alone. Uh, me, uh, my partner William, Kirk, and I forget who it was. Seth Banks. Was it Seth Banks? Uh, four of us spent two hours just trying to move the kegerator in this one spot to turn it the right way to get it through a doorway to get to the next room. Just two hours just in that confined space. But we did find a ratty dollar taped to the bottom, so it was all good. <laughs> that was the first dollar you made. That was the first dollar. <laughs> it's like our little screen right there. <laughs> all right, I'll second uh, the Goodwill uh, comment. I, I, I've been shocked and impressed by our community and people's willingness if they you know they see something missing at the club to just buy it and put it in there or to put out some nice you know put out some lint chocolate for everybody to take or just little little things or, or the big things you know, when we needed to to uh, build out the space people showing up and doing Saturday after Saturday of 10 hours of work um, you know it, it's a it's a few people and I realized how important each person is uh, you know, 
every single person. We've had a couple of new movers to the Seacoast, and that has made all the difference. They, they have so much energy, and they're so passionate uh, that I, I'm not sure that the practicing would be what it is today if they hadn't moved at just the right time. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that's wonderful. So that's, that's it. That's all we have for time. Thank you all for listening. Thank you to our panelists for sharing your information.